delightful location is an oyster farm. Now, I really like oysters. In fact, I love oysters and I love oyster farming. And I like oyster farmers too. There's some really nice people. So what we're gonna to do today, me and Raul, we're gonna get in the water at this oyster farm and we're gonna swim about and have a look at the oysters in their cages. I'll tell you a bit more about some oyster farming because it's a really good industry. They make a lovely product. It's super clean for the environment. It's sustainable. We need more of this. So we're going to take a little tour there. It's pouring with rain. It's pretty grotty, but I think we're going to have some fun anyway. I'm starting to get the shivers now. Uh, I need to get in the water, get wet suited up and crack on with this before I get too cold and give up. <laughs> The oysters are farmed in these swinging boxes. And they either swing off ropes floating from the surface or from bars pinned to the seabed. But the key thing is these can swing. So as the tide and the waves moves them around, the oysters are shaken about inside, which ensures that they all get equal space, they all get plenty of room to maneuver, they get plenty of food from the plankton that they filter from the water, and that the shells are all a nice uniform shape and size. There's not many oysters in each box. It gives them plenty of room to grow and it gives them plenty of access to the filter feeding that they do. These oysters feed entirely on natural plankton which grows solely from sunlight and that's it. Nothing gets put into the water to feed them. It's the most natural form of farming that you're ever going to get. See as I'm moving under them, these boxes are swinging just with, just with the motion of me passing underneath. That ensures you get a lovely even product. See the greenness of the water here. That's why the oysters from this location taste so good. This water's clean, but it's full of plankton. So that's what an oyster farm looks like under the water. Now what we've got to do is wait for the tide to go down when all these will be exposed. It's really dark. Look at this. This is broad daylight allegedly, but oh, would you go down there? It really isn't, really isn't good. And then the swell picks up just to make matters worse. This really isn't shaping up to be an epic dive. But still, we persist. There must be treasures down there. There must be treasure down there somewhere. I'm thinking scallops, crabs, who knows. It's diving by torchlight. It's basically a night dive. Six meters look and it's black as night. <laughs> There's a nice little brown crab. These are really good. Really tasty, these. Ooh, Looks pretty good for scallops down there, but I found this beauty. But look, it's a lady crab. But look, she's got a replacement claw. I mean, she must have been fighting. And look, this little back leg. Little dinky one. Lost that in a fight. Nice crab, though. Imagine that on a bit of crusty bread. <laughs> and this beast is Marthistarius glacialis, an enormous starfish found in this part of the world. Wonderful creatures these. And then we found this little seabird, looking a little bit lost amongst the wave, but he assured me he knew what he was doing. Beautiful. Isn't that just beautiful? All right, at this point the sea was getting a little bit too rough, so we decided to get out and walk back to the oyster farm. It was getting a bit too sketchy out there. Now I had tried to make you a nice little piece to camera here about the oysters, but the audio quality on the GoPro Hero 7 did not permit it. So here we go as voiceover. There are two types of oysters. This is the Pacific Oyster. This is the one you almost always buy in restaurants and shops in the UK. It's that long shape. And it's not native to here, it's from the Pacific. It won't breed in our waters. However, this, this little round one, this is our native oyster. It's the European flat oyster. Oysters from this country should be round, but they're almost extinct because they're so nearly fished out. But they take a lot longer to farm, so they're not used by the farmers so much. So there's a lot of effort underway in farms like this to try and bring these oysters back. But it's a tall order, it's a challenge. However, these things are delicious. They, they taste nicer and they're, they're, they're more expensive. 
but they're the best. This is the future. And they're native, they spawn here, they spawn in our, in our waters. This basket here is full of, uh, I think there's specifics in there. But there are natives on this farm and there are efforts underway to hatch these in hatcheries to restock the wild as well as fish farms. It's good things happening here. Really good things right now we're looking at. This is sustainable modern aquaculture. The world needs more of this. And this is what you get <clears throat> when you leave the oyster farm. A nice big box. Weighs a ton. Look at these beauties. I tell you, this was no ordinary oyster farm I was on. These guys are another level of product quality. Look at these. Look at these things. And I didn't steal these. I was given these very kindly by John, the proprietor of Loch Nell Oysters. These are the finest you're going to get. Beautiful. But without further ado, let's try one of these fellas. Go with this one first. Oyster knife. Never try and open oysters with a regular knife. It will not end well. Somebody will go to casualty. Oyster knife, always. You basically just go in at the hinge. I hope you saw that. I had to do it holding the GoPro in my mouth. And that, my friends, is a day at the oyster farm. If you like this video, subscribe, you know, seafood, sea adventures, general messing about in the sea. Anyway, cheers, folks. That's so good. It's got all the flavour. Loch Nell oysters. You want oysters? You know where to get them. Loch Nell. They're good. Fortunately, I've got another 20 to eat. See you later. Bye.